Well, the good news is that uh, you guys did pretty well on the test. Um, so I was very pleased with it. We're going to talk about those, those items. Under last week's assignments for the first test, I have actually posted the solutions. And problem number one, the points that people had a tendency to miss on problem number one is, did you provide me a graph? Because this was open book, open resource, I was expecting to get a graph. Not only was I expecting to get a graph, I was expecting to get the curve fit. And then I was expecting you to calculate the acceleration due to gravity from the curve fit. So some of you gave me a hand-drawn graph. That didn't get you full credit. Some of you gave me a graph, but didn't give me the equation of motion that was represented by the graph. So you didn't get full credit. And then some of you didn't calculate the acceleration due to gravity correctly. So you didn't get full credit. So on that first one, that's really what I was after was that part. So I'm gonna open up my key here. So this is a PDF and I've handwritten things out so that you all can see my logic for problems. So this was the equation that came off of that graph. And we wanna compare our equation of motion. So one half the acceleration was gonna be this negative 1.9554. So to get my acceleration, I'm gonna to have to multiply that by two, and I'm gonna have a negative acceleration of negative 3.91. I wasn't very picky about, was it 3.91 or was it 3.92? That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for, did you do this kind of an analysis? And did you provide, hang on, I've got somebody who's joining us. Looks like we just had a bing. And so um, that's where I got our, how I came up with the, the grading. Um, this is how I did the one breaths per week. Several of you used a different number between 12 and 20. I, if you gave me something that was in this range and in this form of calculation, you got credit. So that you have that one there. From number three, Again, this is also how I read the data on the graph and how you read the data on the graph might be a little different. So I was I was getting, you know, so I had it as 22. Some other people had it as 25. That's fine. And you got full credit for that. Reading the position right off the top, you got full credit there. If you got a number that was in the 160s, I did have a couple of people that had a couple of interesting numbers. I'm not sure where they came from. So definitely read the comments that I provided you on your test, but it's there. And the instantaneous velocity for part D should have been zero. That was in a horizontal flat part of the curve and you should have gotten a zero for that horizontal piece due to gravity. So a lot of people, for whatever reason, part D was not, was, was a little difficult. Number four, I want you to go back and look at how the question was worded. The question was worded that the ladder forms a 23 degree angle with the wall of the building. So this is the angle that's being described. Mo most of you gave it as this angle. That's the wrong angle. And if you use the wrong angle and use the right trigonomic function for that angle, you, know, you lost five points. If you use the wrong angle and the wrong trigonometry function, you didn't get credit. But this one should be, you were looking for the opposite side. And so you should have been using the sine of the angle 
And so the 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 value that you'd end up with is 0.718 meters. And that's the length of this side of the item. For number five, the common mistake was you're dropping the ball. A lot of people did it correctly, except you were looking for the time when it passed the 18 meter mark, not the 20 meter mark. So several of you lost points just because you used 20 instead of 18, but you had the right idea. This one, you, the again, read the question. It said the wall was to the right. So this is to the right. So these are the directions. If you drew your wall on the wrong side, you got the wrong direction on your acceleration. So this is the correct analysis for, for this problem. Some of you just lost points because you drew the wrong picture. Some of you lost points because when you drew the wrong picture, it messed up your calculation. So you wanna make sure that you're getting that particular one there. Most people got number seven. This one, you are doing it to four significant figures. And, and I did have somebody ask me about question number, what one of the questions in the homework. This is exactly the exact same way that the homework was asking you to do it. You're given an equation, you're evaluating that equation at time is three seconds or in time is two seconds, and then you're calculating the average velocity. But as you narrow that time gap, what it's trying to show you is you're getting closer and closer to an instantaneous velocity, and that time gap is going to change your average. So if you do this one, you're gonna do this again, you're gonna do it at 2.4 and at 2.6, and you're gonna see that there is a significant difference between that instantaneous velocity or that average velocity at that point in the curve. And so, I, I, you know, most people did the calculation okay. Some people messed up the second part of the calculation, not quite sure what went wrong there. But the kind of the points, if you did this one, most of the time it was a math error. That was an issue. This one, uh, most people did it correctly. I saw a couple of math errors. Uh, if you lost points, a lot of it is because you didn't give me both answers. You only gave me time or you only gave me distance. Now, this is my solution for the blue and red car. So I calculated the time that it took the blue car to get to 20 meters per second. I calculated the time that it took the red car to get to 22 meters per second and the time that it took it to get to 100 meters so that I had a good start at the 100 meters. And then I did my two after the first 100 meters, the distance traveled is gonna be, but for the blue car, it's the time that the blue car travels times 20. For the red car, it's 22 times the time that the red car travels, but the blue car is gonna hit its 20 meters per second at 1.95 seconds before the red car gets to there. So we have our relationship between time. So I got the value. I ended up with my rounding. I got a, a 429 meters. And if you add the 100 meters, your total distance was 529 meters. I think a lot of you got 528. I'm not sweating that at all. And then the total time was around 31.45 seconds. So you should go back and review your, your test, compared it to this, um, this key. But for the most part, the biggest problem is on a physics test, in order to keep it time reasonable, you only have 10 problems. So losing part of the problem you know, takes a big chunk of points. But for the most part, people did pretty well on the test. 
So questions. How would we list our resources? What do you mean by that? Oh, I did it right here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then this one, and the first one was um, looking at Excel. So I, I looked at that part. That's how I did it. I used, and, and a lot of you gave me your resource. So that was great. Speaking of which, that's a good, thank you for, for, for talking about that because uh, that's something else I did add. I did add, um, where did I add it? I think it's up here. Oh, I gave you a, a um, discussion board for the laboratories to tips and recommendations for good laboratory memoranda. Because as I was grading laboratories in one of my other lab classes, I ran into it, and I'm sure I'm going to run into it, the same thing that that you guys have as well. There we go. Finally opened. I've given. How do I refer to tools like Microsoft Excel and Blackboard? So you know, capitalize the names. Uh, how do I properly cite material? And then I went in and got how to cite videos for our class references in the laboratory. This would be what I would be kind of looking for, how to cite documents that you might find in Blackboard where it's not obvious where it was, but this is, this is the information that you used for your lab. That's there. How to cite data reference sets if I provide you with a data set, how to do that. And then I've given you a link to MLA style and APA style. I'm not being persnickety about which style you're using. As you can see, these really aren't in a traditional APA style or an MLA style, but I want you to be able to tell me, hey, I read the laboratory that was provided or I read that stuff and that this is a way to cite it in your laboratory. So that was a good question. Will you count off for those, like the first two? I will count off on one of the first two. I am not going to count off on both. Okay. Because it's not fair <laughs> because I didn't get them graded to get you to get those in. So the first two labs, I'm only going to count them off on one time and not on both. The one time is to remind you to do it. And the reason I'm being a persnickety about it is because some, several high powered people have lost their jobs in the news recently because they haven't cited their references. And it's a different world now about citing references. And the sooner you get into the practice of citing your stuff, the better off you're gonna be. Okay. Stop sharing. Other questions about the test? All right, let's talk about the lab. 